Well, my name is Brian Peelis and I live at number five, Sanford Mill Lane, the second cottage up there. And how long have you lived here? Oh, about since, uh, 16 years. Is this an annual problem you have here? No, I would say we get two or three years without water and then a couple of years like this where it gets quite deep. What's your escape plan here? The only escape plan we have in the front wheel back is to vacate the house. <laughs> Do you have a dinghy tied up? No. We can drive up the hill. And what's the worst it's been, sir? The worst it's been was in 2000, when uh, we got completely flooded. In fact, all the cottages got flooded, which is unprecedented. And it was about three feet deep in our house. Could you show us, sir? Yes, I could. We're now standing in your garden, your back garden. How high has the water been in past years? The highest it's ever been was in 2000, when it came over the flood bank at the back. And after that, the environment, as you can see, raised the level by a foot uh, with shattering. And what's the damage to your garden every other year? Do you lose plants? Do you lose vegetables? What? Do you lose duck ponds? No, I think uh, the, the worst problem now is that the water can go in the sheds and as you can see right now it's uh, in the greenhouse. Fortunately all the other um, summer house and sheds uh, normally keep just above the water. Presumably you can't have your house insured as a result of this. Because we haven't been flooded, um, because of the precautions, we, we have no problem getting insurance. But you must pay a higher premium than people on higher ground. Um, not really, because because we haven't been flooded, then uh, um, they haven't raised the premium. Okay. Um, what's the prognosis, the weather forecast? What's what's going to happen? Is it going to breach those walls, or is that impossible? No, it won't breach the walls and uh, we're quite lucky. The environment are very good. They, uh, they bring a pump, which you've seen in the road, and uh, so long as we have um, that pump, then we're, we're, we're okay. Why doesn't it completely pump out the water here? Ah, that is a problem. The, the soil around here is uh, rather gravelly. In fact, two or three years ago, they extracted gravel on the meads just a short distance away, and so the water tends to come through the gravel and under the flood bank, which is why we now have a foot of water in the garden here. So what does the pump do then? It um, contains how, how much water's in the garden, does it? Or? Yes, and also because we're on a hill, the water can't get away. So it clears the water, which runs off the fields. And Yesterday the level was up to here, that was our little marker. Yes. And then um, the level went down and with all the rain yesterday afternoon stroke evening it takes about 12 hours for the water to come up again and uh, there's another marker and it's just coming past there now. Tell me about this little setup you've got here. Ah, uh, this is um, this is our um, flood wall which goes all the way around the cottages. Uh, this particular bit is to allow vehicles down the road and into the old waterworks. And How is the highest point it's ever been here? Could you point yeah. it out? So the highest point was there. And did it overflow because that extra brickwork came afterwards? Yes, it overflowed over the top and uh, filled everything up. Now tell me about, tell us about those trees, they look pretty pretty dangerous, oh, what's those, the history? Right, those, um, those trees, that particular tree which is very big came down Christmas time, there must be over a hundred tonne of, uh, of wood there 
Unfortunately, it just missed the end cottage. The uh, council cleared the branches over the road, but, but the rest of it, um, as you can see, is still there, um, which we're not too happy about because it obstructs the flood water flowing through. It's as if a giant beaver has been at work. Well, yes, and it, it has its roots in the, in the ditch, so it, it was quite likely to come down. And of course, there's this one here, we're also concerned about that one. Do any of the environment agencies, etc., care what happens here? Well, actually, the, um, the, the tree expert, I think his name is James McCarthy, is coming down on Monday to see us. And, uh, he's pretty good, he knows his trees. Will he be bringing a giant saw with him? No, no. <laughs> He'll just give us advice. <laughs> and, and hopefully, um, I'm hoping, that uh, one or two of these trees, he, uh, he'll either give us permission to have cut them down or he will um, take steps to have them cut down. Is there an ill wind here that uh, you might have some firewood for your log fire? <laughs> we do have, yeah, we're not short of wood, that's true. We're sitting on what? Well, we're sitting on the, uh, the um, flood barrier, which is uh, not permanent, it's put in, just put in at uh, at flood times. How long has it been here for? Well, before I came, so probably about 30 years now. What does it do? It prevents the water from this side flooding our house on that side. How many times have the houses on that side been flooded? To my knowledge, uh, so well, in the last 30 years, just the once. And how long ago was that? That was in 2000. You lived here then? Yes. How bad was it in your house? about three feet deep and it took five months to dry out, three months to rebuild, so we were out for a year. Why didn't you move? Um, because it's a delightful place to live. We've got fields, front fields at the back and it's three minutes from town. How many cottages are there here? There are five. And you've lived here for how long? 16 years. Gets a bit of excitement into your life, doesn't it? Oh, I can do without this excitement. <laughs> Last night there was a huge deluge. Did it keep you awake? No, not at all. Why not? We, we feel, to, to be fair, that the um, environment control the, uh, the level very, very well. Uh, since we were flooded, they did put in an extra automatic weir in the old waterworks. And uh, what does that do? I d it just gives them additional control over the water levels. Yes. So, apart from a few trees down and your back garden flooded to a few feet, all's well? It is. It is. I'm quite happy. Yeah, we think that the biggest single thing that would help us would be to, to lower the road which goes into the waterworks. It was built artificially high and we think it acts as a weir and that's why we get the water in the garden. Can you imagine County Council forking out money to lower a road? Well, they put it down in the first place so I don't see why they shouldn't take it away or uh, alter it. How would it help more than yourselves? I mean, would it be worth their while just to help three or four people out? It, it, could, it could well help people further back into Chelmsford because the water level on the main road would be lower. So what you're saying is that you built a roadway to the now industrial museum Yes. that was higher than it should have been Yes. and it's created its own weir. Yes. So it, in effect the dam is holding the water back. Quite. If they built it, how, for, how much lower? Well, I, we measured it to be 15 inches above the floodplain. So the water would be 15 inches lower. And as you can see, my garden wouldn't be flooded. My uh, greenhouse wouldn't be flooded. But it would have helped a, a, bigger, a bigger cause if it was, how could they bring it down? A concrete busting machine to lower it 15 inches? Yeah, it's, it's, We're not talking a lot, are no, we? No, that's not a big job. It wants to be something like um, uh, Car Watering Lane in Whittle, where the road goes down, 
and at flood times the water flows over the top of the road instead of building up to an artificial level. Until then, I wish Captain Noah and his merry band a dry time. Thank you very much. <laughs>